Quiet on the set. Hi, I'm Chaz Smith, and my goodness do I hate surfing. Thomas J. Lochtefeld doesn't hate surfing. And there's no bigger name in the wave pool game than the former tax lawyer turned water park proprietor turned creator of surf dreams. Lochtefeld got his surf chops threading caves at Big Rock in La Jolla and has spent the last 40 years trying to recreate similar thrills at the punch of a button. In 1987, he sold his shares in a bunch of theme parks for $2 million and used that cash as well as the sale of his beachfront joint at La Jolla to create a standing wave called Flow Rider. Lochtefeld's real goal, however, was a wave that didn't involve standing waves and finless miniboard. His newest invention is called Surflock and being used right now as the tech behind the Palm Springs Surf Club, which opens on New Year's Day, 2024. Lochtefeld ain't afraid to call a spade a spade, as they used to say, and is a born entertainer. He really is a living surfing treasure. Without further ado, Tom Lochtefeld. <sighs> Tom Lochtefeld has just opened Southern California's very first wave pool in none other than Palm Springs, California, a paradise of golf courses and handsome homosexual men. So let's get into it with Tom Lochtefeld on the new Palm Springs Surf Club and other exciting developments in surf. Starting off, what is the difference between SurfLock, your technology, and other techs, specifically the Slater Sled, Wave Garden, American Wave Machines, and the as yet unseen Endless Surf? So let me give you the big picture. Right. And let's start out with something that, because I don't want to get into the super detailed physics, yep. but let's start out with the way people understand waves and how they're generated in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So if, if you think of the propagation, creation of waves, you have a storm. That storm has wind, that wind has a fetch, and as a function of the velocity of the wind and the length of the fetch, you get the size of the wave, which translates ultimately in the wave period. So that's why people go, oh, 18 second wave period, you know, you know, 10 foot, that's heavy. Yeah. So what it is, is that's all a function of when it hits the reef, it's a function of water volume okay. and the wave height and how it all stacks up and goes over and makes the wave, the barrel, the whatever. So what happens in, in, in let's call it surf tech, there's, the, there's surf lock and there's everybody else. And I, I, let me explain why. In all the others, Slater, Endless Surf, American Wave, um, you name it, the other guys. Yeah. The, the way they make their waves, they have either chambers, you know, their caissons, or sl Slater, for example, is a sled. And what, what happens is, it's as if you had a storm and, and in Slater's case, the storm is a moving storm, but it's the same storm. The wave period, the wave, like the wave height. Now, don't get me wrong. They can modify it theoretically by moving the wedge, but as a practical matter, not gonna happen. Likewise with, with American Waves and Endless Surf, they just, they set all their caissons and they down the line. And that's, that storm is the same, you know, wave energy that's coming out, they can, what they can do is they can vary the timing. They can vary and, and where it might break. So for example, in American Waves, what happens at Waco, down at that end section, they'll pre-fire that one section, but it's the same wave energy across that spectrum of, of chambers, mm -hmm. okay? Now, opposed to surf lock, what we do is we have our caissons, which are our chambers, but every single caisson is its own storm with its own capabilities relative to creating, you know, if you wanted to have theoretically a 10 second wave period in one chamber versus an eight second wave period, we can do that. Or we can change the timing, we can change the height. There's all these different parameters. There's basically infinite permutations. And so it's dependent upon the operator to, so the operator 
in uh, the surflock tech is like an artist, right? Exactly. Versus a operator at a Kelly tech or whatever, where you just push the button and let the thing run. Correct. Or the, on one of whatever, a few yeah. settings. So uh, for, in just to your point, Wave Garden is the same thing. Because if you look carefully at their pool layouts, Wave Garden, American Waves, and the Surf Slater, it's all linear. Like their device that creates the wave is all linear. And, and the reef is all linear, right parallel to it. And what we, our reefs, they're down the pool. We can shape them whichever way we want, and we can change that swell direction whichever way we want. And how big is the footprint of the Palm Springs pool versus like a Slater <laughs> footprint or, yeah, a Wave Garden footprint? Okay, take just because Waco's out there, and I'm going to just say Wave Garden, you know, I'm going to give both. We're about one third the size of America Wave, mm -hmm. and about one fifth or one sixth the size of Slater. So but, it's a lot smaller. But do you get like, is as much, how much time do you get on the wave, do you think, at, like, okay. does that affect the amount of surfing done? Yes, okay. but what we can do, take for example, because we can shift that energy around, we can make a standard A-frame, which will make eight second waves, which is basically ballpark the duration you get at Waco, mm -hmm. right? Alternatively, I can shift it over to the corner and you can actually get a 12 second ride. So we have the capability to modify and alter in, in the way we do it, just because if it was just left without any presets, we do give some foundation, mm -hmm. which, are, which kind of like is your base wave, but then we enable like Shane, for example, to he can tweak this or do that or move this around. He's got plenty of opportunity to screw around with it. So uh, Shane Magnuson, as you mentioned, uh, is the, what's his official title? I think he's Wave Maestro or something, something like that. <laughs> Wave Maestro. Uh, why did he choose uh, your tech over American Wave Machines? It, it, that flexibility. Okay. And it, it, I think it all started with Slater because mm -hmm. he had the perfect wave. But over time, people started to realize, you know, especially the top guys, it's, it's kind of, it, it, I wouldn't say it gets boring, but you just feel that you're not being challenged. How did Surflock come to be the tech choice for Palm Springs? Did Palm Springs, did the guys who start the Palm Springs Surf Clubs or Surf Club come to you or did they sample? And yeah. then how is, how is Surf, Surflock the tech? Okay, this is kind of an interesting story because originally I wanted to get my tech out there. So I went to Premier Parks who owned the Wet n Wild and I basically said, I'll buy that park from you. So I put it into contract and then I flipped it. To, what I did is I called Shane and, and the other guys and Kalani and I said, guys, I got a park in contract, you know, so you got some investors and they go, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, but I said, the condition is I get to put my tech in. Exactly. Uh, so Derek Riley was shocked. I was not shocked. He says Derek Riley and I quote, Derek Riley's Australian, let's not forget. <laughs> 200 bucks an hour is pretty expensive. Yeah. Is, the uh, is the cause the tax expensive or more a price elasticity thing? People in Palm Springs with cash. Now, to counter Derek Riley, I felt $200 to be cheap. For an hour of surf, yeah. 200 bucks. If you are, if somebody, it's kind of pumping today. I looked at the cam earlier. Pipes is packed. Yeah. The whole reefs are packed, right? <laughs> yeah. If I could, somebody said, hey, 200 bucks, give you an hour out there, you know, with five guys. Yeah. I would totally take that. But how did, the, how did the price, like is there a formula or was it just decided upon this is what the, this is what people will open their pockets for? You know, I, I think it's a combo. And, I, and it's, because the, the principals are business guys. They're good guys, but they definitely got to make a buck. The other biggest thing, oh man, they got so much money in that thing. <laughs> they got to get their capital back. When did you buy it? How, how long did this whole process take? Oh God, 
I tied it up in 2018. Okay. And it's what, almost five, five years. years. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, COVID was a factor, but we also did that phase one. And it was, and also in my, you know, there's always decisions one makes down in the development process. And in my opinion, as I've developed a lot of things, I think they, they could have been open years ago, but they didn't take the, I would have gone with the phase one, the first one we had, mm -hmm. just run. Yeah. You know, I would have built another pool, but no, they wanted to do it right. And, but that money, you know, and anyway. You guys didn't have the uh, bureaucratic troubles that Coral Mountains they had, right? There was no, no. because you already had a wave pool or a, a water park. So you already had the water rights yeah. and the community was used to it there, yeah. the facility there. People didn't think, oh, this is going to come yeah. be crazy. Did you watch the Coral Mountain debacle unfold? Yeah. Did you have yeah. thoughts? It was so sad. They got stabbed in the back. It was, it was a joke, in my opinion, because what happened, I know the guys, you know, it was Meriwether Group and John, John Gamble, the, you know, I know personally these guys. And what happened was, even though, it's less water than what was originally entitled, mm -hmm. the golf course, 18-hole golf course, right? It's like significantly less water use. At the time, we had the drought in California, and people, the gen general public, couldn't get their head around, you know, it's, it's, it was such a, what do you call it, a lightning rod or yeah. whatever, and they just... The optics. Of yeah, the optics. Out here, yeah. That's what killed it. And it's so, it was so, you know, I was, I was sitting there watching the whole thing. What they should have done, they weren't, that was the thing I didn't get. Because these guys are sophisticated. When you get in a situation like that, you don't go forward. You pull the deal. Yeah. And then you go pay off all the, you know, council people. And then you sh make sure it goes through. The keys are in the ignition, your highness. <laughs> you shall have camels, horses, an armed escort, provisions, Desert vehicles and tanks. And there yeah. you go. And they, what they screwed up. Yeah. I mean, they, I feel they thought that they had the moral upper ground because it does take a lot less water than a golf course. But to explain just optically, here's this giant yeah. water field out here versus all this green grass. Where, exactly. Yeah. I was, I was sad about that one too. Yeah. Uh, do you have in your scientific brain... Uh, You've got to be always kind of tweaking it mentally. Yeah. Yeah. There's two issues. One is you, you have to make it commercial. And that issue of safety is really critical. Mm -hmm. So I've been working on a number of uh, uh, improvements that allow bigger barreling waves and deeper water. Okay. So that's one big factor. The other is um, smaller spaces because then you can get them in more locations. Mm -hmm. And that maintaining the commercial, because the way these bean counter guys think about it, to them it's all like throughput, right? How many waves can you get per hour? Where, you know, how, do you, how does the queue lines work? You know, the throughput, you know, all those type of quests, you know, your capital, you know, your operating costs and et cetera. So the smaller the pool, the more economically viable, so that's the direction I'm going, but still provide performance. The uh, safety issue, there's nothing really that can be done about the bottom, right? Like, you, you can't have a soft bottom because of the mm -hmm. violence of the... Well, here's what's happened. This is a good one. You'll like this one, because the guys in, uh, in Le Cerf, they're doing this one in Munich, right? Mm -hmm. And they're doing the whole pool with liners. Now, liner, you can pad, you know, you can put a felt underneath it and have a little bit softer. But in my personal opinion, even though they built wave pools before with liners, like they have one in Sydney, I think in Australia, mm -hmm. the, the, the Murtha, who's the company that's doing this for Endless. But I mean, I, because I flow rider for 20 plus years, no. Flow rider inventor here, for those who don't know. <laughs> yeah. Liner over time, and, and with, because the way these things work, when you have two layers and you get a leak, I mean, think about it, you got a few acre pool, right? Invariably, there's gonna be leaks, so you get water in between. Then you got the differential pressure, 
between the troughs and the crest, I mean, that's hundreds, because every linear foot is 64 pounds, right? So you get a, I mean, think of that delta. Yeah. And, then, and then what's happening is it's moving and, and it's fluxing. Is it gonna fail? Yeah, it'll fail. I, I remember uh, that that was a big problem with the Waco pool yeah. is its liner ripping off and yeah. or regularly, yeah, whipping up into the lineup and then yeah. shut it down and figure out, you have to drain it too, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why, I mean, they come up with what they think are their solutions, but I mean, we'll see, right? And I hope I'm wrong because yeah. it's bad for the industry, really, but still, I, I would never do it. Do you have any opinion on uh, Surflock on the plunger tech? Oh yeah, Surflakes. Yeah. <laughs> or sorry, not Surflakes. Uh, yeah, Surflakes. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting. I mean, what do they call that? Not cyberpunk, but steampunk. Yeah. Oh, insane! It was so cool, but from the physics and the realities of because I mean, here's how it works, right? In order to make that class of wave and the size they did with the OcuWave and all that, it was 32 feet deep. How do you lifeguard that? Yeah. Someone gets down there, they're gonna, you know, you can't even dive down there unless you got a diver. And the water volume, how do you sanitize, filter? No, there, there's life, I mean, there's all these requirements relative to the number of people per square foot of surface area. Mm -hmm. No, never gonna happen. Never. I mean, what's economically gonna, viable? What's going to happen to the facility there? It'll just be a one-off. There's uh, no way to maintain that. That thing's yeah. going to crash. It's done. It's done. I mean, can they, could they operate it theoretically? Yeah. But they're going to lose money. So in the uh, surf pool tech race, I suppose the ones that will survive will be Wave Garden. I guess it's already proven, a proven tech. Uh, yep. Do you think Kelly Slater's will survive? The surf ranch, not the tech. current version. No, the plow no. is done. Zero. So that'll be the Dubai facility. Lamore will tick along as long as they can sell it out for sixty-five yeah. grand or whatever it is, and then that'll be it. And then it'll be what are the other ones? And Surf Lock and Endless Surf. That'll be it, right? Yep. And do there's a couple other ones out there, but I, in my thinking it through, I haven't seen anything call it that it could be. Viable. There's a lot of mechanical ones because mechanics, call it conceptually, are very easy to do just in terms of long term. I mean, because I, I go back like in the water park business over 40 years, yeah. right? They used to have mechanical wave pools. They all failed and they replaced them all. Yeah. It's just like the maintenance, the just like a boat in the water. Have you ever, did you ever own a boat? My best friend owns a boat, which is the best way to own a boat, is have him owning the boat. <laughs> you got it. How long do the investors think it'll retake or take them to recoup investment on the Palm Springs? Or what's the hope? Yeah, Palm Springs it was, it was a little, in my opinion, a little bit of a passion play. Mm -hmm. So a little bit spent in, call it from an economics, maybe a little more than would be normal. The way it should normally work, you should get your money back in three years. It's okay. about a 33% okay. return is your goal. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. No, that's fair. But think about it. The risk margin for this type of activity, you better get that type of yeah. return. Uh, where's the <clears throat> ideal East Coast location if you're going to... Florida. Florida. I have one in, in uh, call it a private one. Mm -hmm. This guy in his backyard. Oh, classic. This guy bought it over the phone with FaceTime, right? Yeah. He just saw what we were doing and, you know, listen to me talk and he goes, that guy knows what he's doing, I'm buying this thing. <laughs> so he spent 10 million, built this pool. He, he sold out the first few investors, just his buddies at par, because he had 10 people total. The last guys were in at 5 million a pop. He made 10 million on the deal. On his purse, and it's a personal, like, so it's like a private club. <laughs> That's genius. Yes. I, I want to do that. So classic. Yeah. I loved it. I got to figure out some buddies who are rich <laughs> to, to start one right here. <laughs>